Hello, and welcome to the National Spectrum Consortium Spotlight. I'm Randy Clark, the current elected vice chairman, and today we're doing another spotlight of five-minute interviews uh, with a current NSC member. Uh, today, we're honored to have Steve Douglas, who's the head of 5G for Aspirant Communications. Steve, welcome, sir. Thanks for having me here, Randy, today. Absolutely. Uh, I look forward to the conversation. Uh, before we get started, though, can you give uh, give us a little background on what you do at uh, Spirant Communications, sir? Yeah, absolutely. So Spirant, um, we're a global provider of testing, security and service assurance solutions for the ICT industry. And we're used uh, right across the end to end uh, communications ecosystem, the chip makers, the network equipment providers, service providers, uh, government enterprises use us to help test, validate, and, and then commercially launch their systems and services. Uh, I head up our 5G strategy with Inspirant, and, and that's helping develop our market plans, investments, uh, but also working as an advisor to industry bodies and government. Uh, that's wonderful. Can you tell us a little bit more about the test and assurance solutions uh, uh, and how they play a role in the simulation and acceleration of 5G innovation for the military and for industry and academia? Uh, absolutely. I, Randy, a big challenge for many of our customers um, is that 5G is still in its infancy. Um, and, you know, if you're the military or, you know, you're in the government and, and you're, you're wanting to cost effectively and rapidly experiment or develop a novel new application, getting access to these environments, to real environments is pretty complex and difficult today. And you're also limited by the flexibility, you know, to run the what ifs or maybe, you know, potential uh, destructive testing you may need to do. So a big part of our, our business is really providing four key areas uh, or solutions. The first of those is uh, 5G network emulation technology, which emulates the key 5G network functions. Um, and that's really to reduce the need for you to have access to a, a real network or, or to, to reduce the need for actually accessing even spectrum. The second area is around uh, large scale traffic generation. And this is to make testing systems in these environments ultra realistic and future proof by providing the large capacity that you're going to see in the future, the congestion that you'll have in the networks. The third area then is really around automation technologies. And this is really to allow seamless access uh, to these environments and test beds so that you can have a multitude of workers that can be remote accessing and innovating simultaneously. Um, and then the final area is around active test and assurance um, systems really to allow you to continuously uh, monitor and test the performance and security efficacy of the actual live operational system and network. Now, these capabilities in their own right are massively beneficial uh, to enable people's 5G journeys. But what's really interesting, if you bring them together and combine them, you can create something completely innovative, which is a we call a 5G network digital twin, which is an immersive sandbox to allow you to continuously prototype and to allow you to continuously test. Uh, such uh, critical steps in uh, the acceleration of good ideas and standards to actually uh, creating reference architectures and production networks. Um, I'm very interested to hear more about the novel solutions that Spiron has created, especially around digital twin and continuing test environments. So could you elaborate? Yes, yeah, so Randy, let me, let me give you three quick examples here. So. Our 5G network digital twin today is being used by a national security agency. And um, this is a, a replica of the, the new 5G core network and the 5G radio access network. And it's being used here to help them research the risks associated with the new 5G network, but just as importantly, to start to identify the mitigation opportunities. Because one of the potential benefits of the new 5G network is its flexibility. And there's an opportunity that the 5G network could be its own form of self-defense. And just to give you an example of that, is some areas around network slicing, where there's people are looking at it, could it be used to dynamically quarantine attack traffic and provide or create real-time treatment centers? The second example, again, with the network digital twin is another national body who's integrating it with their immersive simulation environment for connected autonomous vehicles. Now, this is to allow them to safely test both military and commercial 
uh, vehicles in a lab environment, uh, reducing the, uh, the, the need to be always out on the open roads or an off-road complex environments. Um, and then the third area, just on the continuous testing environments that you mentioned, we'll, we're working with a major North American service provider today, very much around their digital supply chains for the new 5G core network. So again, working with their network equipment providers, we've created a continuous test in an automated environment, which allows the volume and velocity of new software coming from these vendors to rapidly go through a, a performance and security efficacy testing cycle. So it can be actually put into the commercial networks as fast and rapidly as possible. Stephen, uh, there's no doubt uh, of the importance of the work that uh, you're doing. Um, you know, what's interesting to me is you've got a very uh, interesting perspective uh, on the ecosystem based on where you sit in it. Uh, I'd be very interested to uh, get your opinion on what you see as you know, the top five trends in 5G that we should all be uh, thinking about. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think the first of those is really around cloud architectures. Um, we're expecting to see greater use of cloud technology and top topologies. Uh, to provide flexible new capabilities, especially at the network edge or, or the tactical edge. And this is very much around low latency and mission critical type systems. And we also expect to see the cloud architectures play a, a pivotal role in defining the architecture of what we expect to see with 6G technology in, in, across the next decade. The second area is really around Open RAN. Now, obviously Open RAN today is still very much in its infancy. Uh, but we do expect to see it mature towards 5G in the next 12 to 18 months. Now, what I would say is that we do um, suggest that the ongoing support of Open RAN by government policymakers and service providers to really help accelerate the adoption curve around it. The third area, uh, which is also on a, on a rapid journey, is 5G security. You know, it's moving today from this preventative perimeter approach. Uh, to a more proactive, immersive approach using artificial intelligence. Uh, and I would sort of suggest a, a lookout for also quantum uh, secure communications uh, as a potential future of hackable transport mechanism. And I think that's, that's a pretty cool approach to security. And then the final one I just would call out is, you know, as we look more to the skies with our, our low earth orbit uh, satellite implementations that are starting to go up, you know, today the primary focus is around ubiquitous coverage here on the ground, but they do start to lay the foundations for a space communication network. And as our ambitions go to, you know, to go to Mars and go back onto the moon, you know, it's going to become a pivotal part of that sort of future communication uh, system that's going to be required. And what's pretty cool about that, you know, once we get to 6G uh, with holographic communication, combine that with the space communication networks, you know, you and I could be here on Earth, but actually standing on the moon at the same time. And that's pretty cool. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, you covered a lot of ground there. Uh, it's it's all very pertinent. Uh, you think of uh, distributed 5G cloud cores. Uh, you think of the integration of cognition at the radio and AI in the network. Uh, you think about uh, the uh, emerging capabilities of quantum compute, quantum communications, and quantum encryption. Uh, you add that uh, to the nanosat low Earth orbit satellite constellations, the lower of latency, you know, putting compute in space uh, and uh, and uh, agile uh, uh, moving uh, the compute uh, around in space. Um, it's going to mirror what's happening on a 5G network terrestrial. And we're going into the space domain with it, which you know expands the reach of 5G globally. Uh, very, very interesting, Steve. Your insight and your expertise uh, is well noted, and we can't thank you enough for one supporting our clients, uh, two supporting uh, other members of the National Spectrum Consortium, and your current contributions to the ecosystem. So, with that said, Steve, thank you very much for being with us today, sir. It's great being here, Randy. Absolutely. So uh, everyone, thanks for watching. If you've got questions for myself or Steve, uh, please reach out. If you've got recommendations for future spotlights, we're also interested in your feedback. So with that, uh, thank you very much and uh, have a good day.